How's it going my dudes? Welcome back to another video. If you do not yet know, we do have a private Discord server and the link is down in the descriptions below. You can go ahead and check it out. And without further ado, let's begin with the upcoming banner. It is going to be called the Kohane banner just because Kohane will be my favorite pick for the banner itself. But that is not to say that the other units are not good. The other units are good as well. But before we begin, I will need to make some declarations. Firstly, these are just my opinions and I am in no way instructing you on what you should do with your beats. I'm just giving you my own opinion of how I feel about the individual units. And secondly, most of the stats that you're going to see over here are based on the JP server, so they may differ very greatly when the units are finally released. They may be buffed or they may be nerfed, and I do not know. But without further ado, let's start with Miguel. He is the Soaring Ambassador, and he is a win 5 star character. Leader buff, the friend making magician. Win characters attack plus 80% and skill damage plus 90%. I'm pretty sure that this is going to be nerfed. And here's the skill Echo Breath using powers from the Labyrinth. Heal 10% of the leader's HP, effect enhanced on win characters, and grant win characters attack buff. You also grant power flip damage buff for 15 seconds as well. Skill cost of 450. And ability 1, if self is a win character while own HP is at or above 80%, leader's attack plus 30% and power flip damage plus 60%. And ability 2, when leader receives damage 10 times, leader thunder resistance plus 3% up to 30%. And if self is a win character, power flip damage increases by yet another 30%. And ability 3 as a main, while own HP is at or above 80%, other win characters attack plus 60% and power flip damage plus 60%. While own HP is at or below 80%, heal 20% of own max HP for one time. So this character is absolutely amazing because for two reasons. Number one, you can use him for win direct attack in the future. And number two, you can use him absolutely for win power flip. He's going to be very strong for win power flip as well. I mean, this is exceptionally clear. However, that's not to say that this character is not useful for the sushi skill damage team. This character is still very useful as unit three of your sushi team. Yes, you're not going to benefit so much from the power flip over here, but you're definitely going to benefit a lot from the win character's attack buff. So in my opinion, he is a very strong support. And next up, we have Kikuno. This is not her debut banner, but this will be the official release of Kikuno herself. So if you missed the opportunity to summon her the last time, this is the time that you can start to pull for her. She is the Wandering Courtesan and a 5-star fire unit. Leader buff Hanamachi Beauty, fire characters attack plus 30% and multi ball attack plus 150% and HP plus 25%. Skill Wrath of Hakunro summons a red Oni for 30 seconds with double strike and penetration and a blue Oni for 30 seconds with float and regeneration. Deals fire damage to enemies hit. So a little bit about these two summons. Each summon has its own effect and it doesn't actually grant that effect to the rest of your party in case you're wondering about that. So these summons are going to be exceptionally good for racking up combos because not only do they last very long but they also have double strikes, penetration and levitation. And onwards with her abilities, ability 1, multi balls direct attack damage plus 200% and ability 2 where multi balls appear, fever gauge plus 25 and multi ball direct attack damage plus 15% up to 150 and ability 3 as a main while 2 or more multi balls are present fire characters attack plus 25% and multi ball attack plus 200%. So this unit is going to be so good and in fact a core unit for multi-ball teams. But of course the best to run with her are fire multi-balls. So characters like Marina and Marnie are going to be excellent picks. But you can also use the more recent units like Lila for example. And like I said before, Lila works very well as a sub to a fire multi-ball team. And moving on, we have Floretta. She is the Reckless Mercenary Swordsman, a light 4-star unit, leader buff, safe strategy, light characters attack plus 30% and skill damage plus 110%. This is definitely going to be nerfed. Skill Ball Obscure, swinging a large sword, create large numbers of soap bubbles and deal light damage to the entire field without breaking weak points. Inflict slow debuff for 20 seconds. Ability 1, when battle begins, own skill gauge plus 100%. And ability 2, every 3 enemies defeated, own skill damage plus 10% up to 100%. And ability 3 as a main, every 3 enemies defeated, grants self skill damage buff plus 200% for 5 seconds. So the way I see it is, it may be possible to one pun the Arc EX using Floretta because number 1, yes, you have 100% skill gauge which means that you can nuke immediately. But not only that, ability 3 with every 3 enemies defeated, right? So let's say Arc EX and his 2 other alter egos gets defeated you then grant yourself a skill damage buff for 200% for 5 seconds. And 5 seconds is more than enough time for the next Arc EX to appear. But of course, these are just guessworks at this point in time. I can't be sure if this is a sound strategy, but we'll see, okay? So when Floretta does come live, I will try to pull for her. If I do, then there'll be a little bit more testing to be done. 
Anyway, moving forward, we have Kohane. So this is the reason why I'm excited about the banner. The Tengu's love disciple Kohane, she is a win 4 star character, leader buff girl, aim for the city, win character skill damage plus 100%, and while combo count is at above 20, win character's attack plus another 55%, skill, Tengu, Kagura, Raising, and Uchiwa, direct win bullets towards the front and deal win damage to enemies hit and their surroundings. This has a super low skill cost of 380, and ability 1, when own skill activates, excluding self, win character skill gauge plus 10% up to 5 times. And ability 2, if self is a win character when battle begins, own skill gauge plus 100%, and every 10 combos, win character's attack plus 1%, up to 40%. And finally, ability 3, as a main, when battle begins, excluding self, win character skill gauge plus 50%, and every 100 combo, win character skill damage plus 20%, up to 80%. So I'm very excited about ability 3 because it grants everyone skill gauge, which works really well if you're running a Mura leader because Mura grants all win units 50% skill gauge as well, which means everyone has 100% at the start. But of course, you're not limited to running Mura leads. You can definitely make it work with 50% skill gauge across the board with 100% on Kohane herself. So I'm actually very excited to test out different teams using this unit. And finally, we have the water 3 star, Clara the Admiring Female Mercenary. Leader buff mustered up courage, power flip damage plus 70%, and here's a skill B smash. So this has two different effects. So when the HP is at or above 60%, you deal water damage to those hit, and you grant self an attack buff and a power flip damage buff for 15 seconds as well. But when the HP is below 60%, you grant self fire resistance buff for 20 seconds and you heal 8% on yourself. And ability 1, while own HP is at or above 60%, you increase power flip damage by 50% and you reduce all elemental resistance by 20%. And ability 2, while own HP is at or below 60%, you increase your fire resistance by 30%. So ability 1 and ability 2 will never activate at the same time. And ability 3, as a main, while own HP is at or above 60%, power flip damage plus 60%. And while own HP is at or below 80%, you take damage in place of other party members and own fire resistance plus 60%. So I think she has a place in a water power flip team, but I think you don't really want to use her as a leader or a leader sub. Instead, I think she works best, in my opinion, as a main unit with Faf as a subunit. So with this, definitely your attack buff on your skill is going to be a bit useless. But you still have a slew of power flip buffs. So you have power flip buff on your skill, a little bit of power flip only when you are at or above 60% HP, and a little bit more power flip damage on your ability 3 as well. But let's say if you are below a certain amount of HP, you will then become super tanky, which is very nice for making sure that your team survives. And not only that, when your HP is below 80%, you will be permanently taking damage in place of other units, which means that your Fuff is probably going to be nigh invincible. And now on to my final thoughts for this banner. We're going to start off with Miguel over here. So I think Miguel is a really, really good unit. If you do get him, then congratulations to you. He's going to be very powerful for any kind of win team. So he's definitely very nice to have and I would definitely hope to get him but he will not be on my priority for this banner. And next up Kikuno, yes if you're gonna go for multi ball, she is definitely a must have. She's very strong and she has a lot of use down the line. Even in JP right now she's still highly relevant. And next up we have Floretta. I can't say for sure if it is possible to one punch the Archeax with Floretta, but it is certainly something that I would like to try. But honestly, apart from just one punning Archeax, there is not a tremendous need for Floretta, in my opinion, of course. I mean, at the end of the day, own skill gauge plus 100% is really big, so she will still be very useful in that sense. But I think she doesn't give you that instant ramp up in DPS like a Murakumo can or a Viron can. So she gives you 100% skill gauge, doesn't mean that you can do a lot of damage as well. So do keep that in mind. And moving on, we have Kohane. Yes, this is easy for me to say. She is going to be a very important unit, definitely a must pull. Honestly, she's just a 4 star unit with such high value. There is absolutely no reason to pass up on her for this banner. And finally, we have Clara. I think if you are a new player, then she can be quite useful, especially with Faf. I think with Clara Faf, you are almost guaranteed a safe run on Golem EX. But of course, for much stronger players out there, you don't really need Clara for the defensiveness. You may use Clara as a power flip damage buffer, but I think based on the current units in the game, there isn't a lot of room for Clara. And you probably do not want to use her with Faf because then she will share the aggro from the damage that your team receives. Because as long as her HP is below 80%, she will potentially take aggro from Faf himself. 
and you want to make sure that your other units are at 100% HP, but of course that depends on your build, but generally speaking water teams tend to need to have full HP. So I think she's an interesting character but definitely not a must have, not by a stretch right? So I guess I can end the video over here, that's it for the banner review, I hope you guys enjoyed it, if you did don't forget to leave a thumbs up, it really helps the channel, leave a comment down below if you agree or disagree with anything that I have said in this video. And this has been free to play by the way and as always I will see you in the next video.